Hi friends. In today's lecture, we will study everything about dimensioning and printing your document. So first thing which you have to identify is that at the bottom of the screen, you see two different tabs. One is called as the model tab, the one in which we are present right now. And the second is called as the layout tab. The layout tab is the one which would be actually printed. So the first thing which you have to understand when we come to the model tab is that the model tab is drawn at a 1 is to 1 scale. Means this will take for example if I go into annotation and in dimension if I select linear dimension it will ask me are you creating an annotation annotative object right now we'll just select ok and I will just show you that when you go to make this linear dimensioning you will say that I want to start that linear dimensioning starting from here and up to here so if you see this dimensioning the size of this line is 23 feet 7 inches so when you print it you can print at such a huge scale hence you have to learn how to scale this document and print it so that it looks reasonable on your printed paper so let me show you how you can do that so first I'll delete this old dimension which we had created and we'll go into the layout tab in the layout tab the first thing which you have to decide is that on what size are you going to print the document take for example I'm planning to print this document on a a work size paper then after going into the layout tab click on the layout in the menu and in the layout you have the page setup so select the page setup and there you select new page setup now it will ask you a name for the setup so we will give the name as a1 layout because I want to print this on a A1 size paper so I will give it the name as a1 layout you can give any name of your choice and for convenience I am giving it the name as A1 layout after that I will select OK then it will ask me to select the name of the printer in my case I want to do it as a PDF file so I will select from here AutoCAD PDF high quality print and then it asks me to select the paper size so in the paper size I will select ISO full bleed A1 594 by 841 millimeters and let me explain you in short what is this a1 size so I'll go into my browser and in my browser I will start Google and in Google I'll type different page sizes in inches so here I select this a series paper sizes chart and here you can come to know the size of the different papers so you can see the A1 is 594 by 841 millimeters that is 23.4 by 33.1 inches so if I come to back to my AutoCAD this is 594 by 841 inches 
which is exactly the same as pi 94 by 841 millimeters okay then it is asking you what do you want to plot so i want to plot it as a layout then it is asking me the scale so ensure that you select scale as 1 is to 1 then in the units ensure that you select the same units as that what you have selected in your paper so in my model space i have drawn in feet and inches hence i am selecting 1 inches and then you specify 1 inch equals to 1 unit then it is asking you plot size so in the plot size right now we will select monochrome so that everything will come in black and white ok then you get the option of a portrait or a, a landscape model ok so we want it in the landscape side and uh, let's just see over here we will select this 841 by 594 okay so that we get it this way 841 by 594 okay so that we get it in the landscape style and here we select inches okay and it is 1 by 1 inches and then it is landscape and it is monochrome and it is AutoCAD high quality and then we select OK then we will select set current so A1 layout becomes the current and then we will select close so this becomes your current layout and now whatever we do in model space we can bring it over here in the layout and print it so let us go into the model space and the first thing which we will do is we will create one layer for image so I call the layer properties and in the layer properties I create one new layer and I give it a name as Psalms Annotative Nin Layer Okay, so Sam's Annotative Sam's Annotim Layer And then it asks me the color for that layer So I'll select this Cyan color for the layer Then I will select OK And I will set it as the current So I'll click on this check mark turn the current layer off and sans anode dim layer becomes the current layer and then I will close this layer properties now you can see that sans anode dim layer has become the current layer now we will create one style for dimensioning for creating the style I will click on annotation and here you have dimensions see so here you can see that is already showing you some sam's dim style i don't want this style i want to use a different style so i'll click on this arrow over here and in this arrow you can see there is one annotative given over here that is a default style so i'll use that style and basis that i'll say create a new style now here I'll give it the name as Sam's Annotative Dim Style This is the name which I'm giving to the style Start with Annotative and the type of the style is Annotative So ensure that there is a check mark next to Annotative Then I will click on Continue now we we'll start from beginning so in the lines we will select color by layer line type by layer line width by layer then baseline spacing 
in time 0.15 inch bit and bulk then color by layer line type by layer line type extension tool by layer then offset from origin 0.15 inch extend beyond the dim line 0.15 inch after that we go into symbols and arrows arrow size means say 0.15 inch center mark currently i will say none rest do not make any changes anywhere come into the text size so the text style here you are seeing there is it's written as annotative and there are three dots over here so we click over here on the annotative and in the annotative we we'll change the font name to calibri so i change the font name to calibri and ensure that it is annotative and the paper text height i will say 0.15 inch i don't want upside down or backward and i want to set that as the current style so let me make it into a new style so and say the current style has been modified do you want to save changes no so i'll give this new style some name like sam's text style and then i'll say okay so it selects this as the annotative style and I'll say set that as a current then I'll select close okay then font style annotated text style annotative text color by layer fill color is none then over here text alignment select ISO standard then come to fit do not make any changes here in the primary units ensure that it is architectural recession make it to zero and uh, do not make any changes anywhere else no changes in alternate units no changes in tolerance so this is you have finished sam's annotative dim style and you'll select ok so you can see Sam's annotative dim style is created and I will select close. Now remember we are in the annotate tab in the dimensions tab. So here I am saying that I want to use the style whose name is Sam's annotative dim style. This is the one which we have created. And all the dimensioning I want to do it into a layer whose name is Sam's annotative dim layer so all the dimensioning will be in this particular layer now a very important thing before you start the dimensioning is that note at the bottom we have said that show annotation objects so that is on also note that add scales to annotative objects that is also on and the annotative scale is 1 is to 1 after this we will come to the whole tab and here we will select linear dimensioning and we will just turn the snap on so here you have the snap on so I want the linear dimensioning from here to here and where you want the dimension line so I want the dimension line over here okay now why it is not showing you the dimension because it is off so let's turn the dimension layer on now you can see that here text is visible but it is come very very tiny and the reason is because we are at 1 is to 1 scale also if you bring your hover your mouse on this dimension you will see that uh, 3 pointed arrow which is indicating that this is a annotative 
dimension. So what we'll do next in order to make it readable, we'll change the scaling. Instead of 1 is to 1, let us make it to 1 is to 20. So you can see now it's become bigger, but it's become too huge. So let's make it to 1 is to 16 or 1 is to 10. This seems to be proper. So this is the first dimension. Let's continue with the dimensioning over here. So I want another dimension from here to here like this and I want another dimensioning from here to here like this and I want so all round we are doing the dimensioning from here to here like this and then from here to here this way and then from here to here this way this is all the external dimensioning which we are doing then from here to here like this and you can also go for continued dimensioning so if you go in annotation you have this continue and you can say from here to here then escape again linear dimensioning from here to here Again, linear dimensioning from year to year. And again, linear dimensioning from year to year. And the last linear dimensioning we want from year to year. So this finishes all the external linear dimensioning of the house. Now what we want to do, we want to put this into our layout. So first thing which you want to decide, which you have to decide is what all you want to put in the layout. So in the layout, I would like to have one window in which the entire house plan is there with the external dimensions. In the second window, I want to show a close-up of the kitchen with the internal dimensions. In the next window, I want to show the living room with internal dimensions. One more window, I want to show bedroom 1. Next window, bedroom 2. And the last window, the two washrooms. So let us start with first creating one window in which we accommodate the entire house plan. So we go into layout. So this is our layout. And let us see if you go into layout and if you go into page setup, you can see that we are into the layout, A1 layout. And here it will show you also the size of the layout in each case. So it is correct. Now we select rectangular and we'll draw one rectangle like this. This is where I want to show the entire house plan. So what we'll do is create six equal size windows. So this is my first window. Now you see the house plan has come but it has come very tiny. So to edit it, double click inside this house plan like this. And then you can zoom it and bring it close by. Like this till the entire house plan is visible. And over here you select the same scaling what you have selected in the model space. So in the model space, we have selected a scaling of 1 is to 10. 
So in the layout also, we will select the scaling of 1 is to 10. Okay. Then you can adjust the zooming using this navigation bar. So this is the navigation bar and it has options like zoom. So in the zoom, we will select dynamic zoom or in select zoom real time. So I'll just come out of this zoom and then I'll click over here and I select zoom real time and this is where I can very slowly adjust the zoom so that the entire house plan is visible. Then I can press escape and then I can click outside to come out of this uh, edit mode. So I'll end the zoom command by pressing escape and then come out. So this is our first viewport in which our dimensions have come at 1 is to 10 scale. Now I want to make another viewport in which I want to show only the layout of the kitchen. So I go into model and this is the kitchen. So let's do the dimensioning for the kitchen. So I'll select linear dimensioning from here to here. Again, linear dimensioning from here to here. And dimensioning for the door from here to here. And that's it. Now I want to show this zoomed in into the layout. So I go into layout and again I go in the layout tab rectangular and I insert one more rectangle like this over here. Again you can see it's come very tiny. So there's nothing to worry. I'll double click over here. I'll zoom into the text till I'm able to see my kitchen. And I'll select zoom real time. I can also pan my image so that the entire kitchen is properly visible. Then I will come out of the zoom by pressing escape and click outside so the kitchen is visible again I can go into model and now in the next window I want to show the living room internal dimensions so let's do the dimensions for the living room so again linear dimension starting from here up to here Then again, linear dimensioning, starting from here, up to here. Again, linear dimensioning, starting from here, up to here. Again, linear dimensioning, starting from here, up to here. And again, linear dimensioning starting from here 
up to here and one last linear dimension from here up to here if you want to measure these walls you can provide that also so from here up to here and from here up to here now I want to put this living room plan into the next window so again I go into layout again I select the layout tab again rectangle and I draw one more window like this and in that window again you can see it's showing very tiny so I double click and zoom till I'm able to see my entire living room very clearly and I can even pan it this way to so do very slowly so that you are able to see the entire dimensions and mainly highlight the living room there okay. so once you are done with it come out of the zoom command by pressing escape and double click outside and this is complete now I want to show the two bedrooms so again I go into the model and this is the first bedroom so let's do the dimensioning for this bedroom so again linear dimensioning from here up to here and again linear dimensioning from here up to here and again we want linear dimensioning from here up to here so again linear dimensioning and the last is for the door so linear dimensioning from here up to here now once this is done I want to put the bedroom 1 into layout 1 so I go into layout 1 and over here again I'll go in the layout tab rectangular and I'll draw one more rectangle like this and then I'll double click here I'll zoom so that I can see the bedroom one clear and then I'll click outside now here I want to put the bedroom two so again I'll go into modern and this is the bedroom two so let's do the dimensioning for the bedroom too so again linear dimensioning from here to here linear dimensioning from here to here linear from here to here again linear from here to here again here from here to here
and the last strict linear dimension from year to year. So this is the bedroom 2 and I want to put this into the layout 1. I go into layout 1. Again I go into the layout tab. Again I select rectangular and insert one more rectangular tab like this and then double click here and zoom till you are able to see the bedroom too ensure that you zoom it so that the bedroom too is properly visible to you like this and now I want to just create one more tab so I'll just come out of the zoom command by pressing escape twice double click the outside again go into model and these are the two washrooms so let's do the dimension so from year to year you just do very simple dimensioning and from year to year and same way from year to year and again from year to year and now this I want to insert it into layout one so I go in layout one and again I go into the layout tab and select rectangular and draw one more rectangle like this and then I double click here and zoom till I am able to see both the washrooms very clearly I can even zoom it in real time like this so that both the washrooms are also very clearly visible then I will come out of the zoom command by pressing escape and again pressing escape Now I want to print this but let's assume that our printer is a black and white printer. So how do I print it? And again I want it in a PDF file and I want to print it elsewhere. So for this what you have to do is you have to click on the AutoCAD button over here and here you have the print option. In print it is asking you name of the file to print A1 layout high quality dimension is correct what to plot the layout what is the scale 1 is to 1 what and here we have selected monochrome okay and then I will select ok and let us just see it's asking me a name so I will just temporarily save it into a location on my drive and then I will select save so it will make a PDF file and it will show you how your PDF would look like then you can zoom or unzoom and see how your PDF looks like so you can see the dimension is virtually looking very nice and readable on a A1 size paper so once you are happy with the setup you can save this file and you can later on print it elsewhere at a different location wherever you have access to a printer which is supporting A1 size let's close this and come back to our auto thing then it is showing your plot and publish job complete you can close here come back to your model space and you can save this drawing and you are done for the day so friends in this video we have studied how to create annotative dimensioning how to create annotative styles 
how to create viewports, adjust them in the layouts, and how to make a PDF file for printing. Hope you have learned something new. If you like this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you again in the next video. Till that time, goodbye.